guys and welcome back to the show. In this video tutorial, we're going to learn how to test React hook component with just an enzyme. So I've made a simple to-do application and we will learn how to test this to-do list application. Let's get started. Now, instead of my application, I've created a test directory and what I've done is that I've imported React from React, mount from enzyme and then app from app. I've got an input.text.js file and what I've done in here is that I've imported React from React, I've imported shallow from Enzyme and I've imported input from the component input. So if you come over here, I've got input over here. Okay. And then I've got a setup test.js file and this setup test.js file runs before each test. Um, and I have the jest.convict.js file, but that's not what we want to look at today. We want to learn how to test React Hood component with just an enzyme. So I'll carry on and show you guys how to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go into my input.test.js file. And this input.test.js file is basically the input component. Inside of this input.test.js file, I will say describe. And what describe does is that you want to describe what you're doing. You want to describe what you're actually trying to test. And what I'm trying to test is the input component. So I would like to say input like so. And then describe will take a function. So I will say function. Okay. Now I need to write my first test. And I can write my first test using the it block. So I'll say it. And the it will take the description of the test that you want to write. So what this is actually testing, and I will say that it has an input field, okay? And it will take in a function, and this function will also return something. In order to test this, I need a wrapper. So I will say let wrapper, and I'll set the wrapper to be shallow, which is the API that we get from Enzyme, okay? So I'll say shallow, and shallow will take in this input field component, okay, like that. Now, shallow is an API from Enzyme. And what shallow does is that it gives you the shallow version of the component. So you will not see the children that are inside of the component. If you want to get a detailed version of all the parent component and the children inside of the parent component, then we can use the mount API from Enzyme. We will get to that later on. Okay, for now, we're going to use shallow to test just the input component. You can see that this input element has got a class name attribute, which is assigned to input field. Okay, so what I would like to test is that when I initially start the application, the value of the input component is undefined because when I start the application, there isn't nothing in here. It should be undefined. So I'll write a unit test for that and test that it is undefined initially. And how I would do this is basically by saying const input and I want this input to be the wrapper to find and I want to find the class tag input field and what I want to say is that I want to expect that the input dot props dot value to be I want this to be undefined like so. So now if I run the test and I can run the test using npm test. Okay, so I think I made a mistake over here. Um, it has to be dot to be. So I will say dot. So now if I say npm run test, I have one passing test. We know now that the test is passing, but let us find what this shallow is returning, okay? So what I can say is that console.log, and I want to log the wrapper dot debug. I'll log something here as well so that we see exactly what is being returned by the wrapper. So I'll run the test again. And as you can see, this is what is being returned. We have a div and the div contains a form, but what is important is that we are saying in the test that input.props.value and what this input.props.value is returning is basically the value prop, which is this. And the value prop, as you can see, is initially undefined. So that is what we tested initially. So now let's write a test to find out if the form contains a button. So we will test if the component contains a button. 
And how we can do that is basically by saying it contains a button, which is a function. And this function will return something. Okay. And I'll say wrapper will be a shallow of the input component. Then I'll create a constant called button. And the button is basically this. So I can copy the whole of this and I can paste that here. Okay. So I now have a button which has the input submit to do. And how I can test this is basically by saying that expect wrapper dot contains marching element and the marching element is a button. So this button. So what I'm basically saying is that I expect the input component to contain the button to match something which looks like that. Okay. So now if I run the test, I get two tests passing because indeed I do have this button in here. Okay. I do have a button in here. And just to see if I make a mistake and I say, I add lots of T to this and I save, this fails because that does not match. I do not have this in here. I hope this makes sense. So I can go back to button like so. But as you can see already, I'm already duplicating wrapper here and wrapper here as well. As software engineers, we want to keep our code dry as much as possible, as much as we can. So I'll create a setup function using the before each. So I'll say before each. So what the before each does is that it will run before each of this it test run. Okay. So this will run first before it runs this. And then it will run again before it runs this. Okay. And before each, what I want you to do is to create this wrap up for me before you run each test. And now I can set the wrapper as a variable here so that it can be used across this block and that block. If I set it in here, it has a local scope in this function, but I want it to be accessible to this it block and that it block. So I will have it up here. And then I can now say that wrapper will be a shallow of input. So this will run before each of these tests. Okay. So now I can get rid of this and I can just say input will be wrapper of find input field. I can also get rid of this and everything will still pass. As you can see over here, everything is still passing. Now let's write a test to see that the text inside of the button is called submit to do. And we can do that by saying it has a text on the button and I'll say const button will be wrapper dot find. I want to find the button class and I will expect button dot text dot to equal submit to do like so. So if I run the test now, I have three tests passing. So this is how we use shallow from the enzyme API to test react hook components. I hope this makes sense. The next thing we are going to look at is how to use mount to test a detailed version of a component so that we can get the parent and the child contained inside of that parent. To use mount, I'll go into my app.test.js file. And as you can already see, I've imported react from react. I've imported mount from enzyme and I've imported app from app. I will say describe the input field, which takes a callback function. And as you saw in the input.test.js file, I created a before each. So I'll do the same thing in the app.test file. So I'll create a wrapper and before each, I would say mount instead of shallow. And rather than saying input, I'll say app. So I've created a describe, which says the input field. I've created a wrapper and I've created a before each function, which will run before each it test. It is initially empty. Then I'll say that const input will be the wrapper dot find. And what I want to find is the input field. So I will say that dot input field, 
which is basically this input field because this input field is being rendered inside of the app.js file so if i go into the app.js file it is rendering this input as a child component okay so um, i can actually get that input field and test that so i will say input field and i'll say expect input dot props dot value dot to be so now if i run the test we get everything passing but let's find out what this mount is actually returning so i'll come over here and i will say that console.log wrapper the debug so this is what mount is returning and as you can see it renders the child components as well so the input component and all the props of the input components so we can pass values or state into it and as you can see the initial state is an empty string we are going to populate the value with something okay the value is initially empty let's see how we can test that we can put some value in there so i'll come over here and i'll write another describe so i'll say describe a to do value and i'll assign to this to do value i need to pull then i will say that before you run this describe block okay i want you to run run this before each function as well so i'll say before each i'll let input be the wrapper to find and i want to find this input field as well again and what i would like to do is to simulate change okay so in here we have an unchanged function okay i'm going to simulate change like i am changing the value in here so i'll say input dot simulate and what i would like to simulate is change and i'll pass it the values that i want okay so the target i'll set the target to a name and the name is called set field and then the value is the to do value like so so what is this name well this name is basically the name that i have on the input field okay so what i'm saying is that i want to simulate change the target is the name set field and the value that i want to pass to this field is basically i need to poo so before this describe block is run i'll run this function before each function and then what i can now test is that it's the input value changed to it's changed to i need to poo so this value and i can pass it the function and i can say that const input value will be the wrapper.find so it will be this then i will say expect the input value dot props dot value dot to be to do value like so so now if i check the terminal it should pass but i think before i check the terminal let me change this because it is an object it has to be key value pair okay so if i save this and i check the terminal everything is passing so basically what i have done over here is that before you run this test what i want you to do is to simulate change and populate this value field so this value field populate this field with i need to poo okay and now test that it has changed to i need to poo and if you want to actually test or see what is going on i can always do a console.debug so i can say console.debug wrapper here and as you can see it is i need to poo initially it was empty and now it is i need to poo so i've used the simulate api that we get from enzyme to simulate change in a component now let's see if we can test form submission how i will do that is that inside of this describe block so instead of this describe block because in this describe block i will have something inside of the value okay i'll have the value populated to i need to poo so inside of this describe block what i will do is to write another describe function okay so what i want to test is that when the form is submitted the input field is cleared so if i come over here and i say i need to learn react and i click submit to do 
the input field is cleared, right? So I need to test that functionality to make sure that when I submit something, when I click on the submit to do button, this input field is cleared. And I can do that by saying it, the input field is cleared. And I can now say that const input will be this wrapper to find input field, expect input dot props dot value dot to be this. But this will fail because if you check the terminal, it is not empty, it still contains I need to poo. That is because we have not submitted the form. So now we're going to write a before each function that will submit the form before we get into this, um, before we get into this it block. So I will say inside of here that when the form is submitted, so before each create a constant that I'll call form, which is wrapper dot find. And I want to find a class called form. Okay. So I'll say dot form and this class form is basically this form. Okay. So the class called form, then I will say the form dot simulate. And this time I will not say change. I will say submit. And when I simulate submit, I need to pass it a, I would say prevent default, which is basically a function that returns an empty object. Okay. So that it actually doesn't submit. So now if I save this, everything is now passing because the value gets cleared. And if I console the log wrapper the debug inside of the it block, like so, and as you can see, it is being cleared. Okay. So in the first case, it was empty. Then I populated the value with I need to poo. Then now I've submitted the form. It is now cleared. I hope this makes sense. I'll go on and get rid of these console, the logs, cause I don't really need them anymore. The next thing I can test is that when I submit. So if I come over here and I say, I need to subscribe to the show and I click submit. What I want to test is that this has been added to the list of to do's. Okay. I can do that by saying it the to do value is added to the to do list. And I can say that const to do list will be the wrapper dot find. And what I want to find is dot to do. So dot to do. And this dot to do is basically this, which is inside of my to do list component. So if I close this and I go into my app.test.js file, what I can now say is that expect to do list. So this dot to have length one like so and indeed it does have a length one okay that's why it is passing and i can always check the test and i can do that by saying the to do value is and the to do value should be i need to poo so it will be this like so then i can say to do list is wrap out of find to do's and i'll expect to do list dot text and i'll expect that to be this and if I save this, close this, it should be to be, and everything is passing. So basically that is how we use Mount API from Enzyme. So you've seen how to use the shallow API from Enzyme and how to use the Mount API from Enzyme. The difference between shallow and Mount is that shallow will give you the shallow version of the component. So if the component contains children component, you will not be able to use shallow to test the children component inside of that component. But if you want to have a detailed view of all the components and the children contained in that component, then you can use mount. I hope this makes sense. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, make sure to leave it in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.